We've got a little bit of a surprise set for my kids. They're going to be open, uh, waking up here in the next few minutes. And when they do, we're taking them to Universal Studios, probably also Disney World, for the next three or four days. We're flying down to Orlando. I'll be down there. I'll do the show Monday because there are a lot of games to react to. I'll do the show Monday from the hotel. Jason Martin is sitting in, and then I will be out for much of next week for Christmas uh, holidays. Now, I'll still be doing television because they only give us off Christmas Day from television, so you can still watch me in the afternoon. Uh, but going to spend some more time with my family than normal. I hope all of you are going to be able to do that as well. But I'm pretty excited to be able to surprise them. We have a, uh, They have no idea, my kids, my 12-year-old, my 10-year-old, and my 6-year-old, no idea that uh, one of their Christmas presents here is that we're going to go away as a family uh, for several days down to Orlando and go to the amusement parks. I've heard they're not as crowded as they have been in the past. We've been trying to get my kids to read the Harry Potter books, so we're going to take them to the Harry Potter land, all that stuff I'm pretty excited about, but even more excited that we've managed to keep it a secret. So, uh, what, about 45 minutes, we're going to be opening a present underneath the tree, and then I'm going to be headed to uh, the airport uh, within about 45 minutes of this show ending. So I'm pretty excited about that. That is why you will not necessarily hear me a lot next week on the show. So I want to go ahead and say uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Thank you so much for listening to this show. I'll be on Monday. I'll reiterate that, but I just want to let you know what's coming uh, down the pike as it pertains to OutKick. All right. So Thursday night football, the Oakland Raiders... The Vegas Raiders. I'm like John Gruden wearing the hat, uh, the wrong hat, which was uh, kind of emblematic of the larger issues for the Raiders out there. They outchargered the Chargers down the stretch. And ultimately, I really do think this game came down to a couple of plays that neither side could make. The Raiders driving late through the interception. Then the Chargers pick it off, uh, come back down the field, miss their second late field goal, This game goes into overtime. The Raiders are set up perfectly first and goal. Touchdown is a walk-off scenario, walk-off situation. They run the ball twice. I believe I'm correct in this with Josh Jacobs. And then out of a timeout, their third and goal play call is to basically have a stack formation, roll Marcus Mariota out to the right, and they peel the fullback out. And they're somehow expecting that to be wide open. It was well covered. Even if he had caught it, he was going to be short of the goal line. Now, maybe, to be fair to Gruden, if he had caught it and they had gotten down to like the one-yard line, maybe they would have gone for the win there as opposed to kicking a field goal. Instead, they kick a field goal. The one thing you can't do then, as a defensive back coming back the other way, is you can't get beat deep in overtime. And what happens? The Raiders get beat deep, and as a result, their season is effectively over. Now, Marcus Mariota played fantastically well. He had the one interception, the tip ball. Otherwise, I thought he played really, really well coming off the bench, not having had the game plan designed perfectly for him. Ran for nearly 100 yards, threw for a touchdown, converted a bunch of fourth down plays. And if you are a Raider fan, I think presuming that Derek Carr's injury is significant enough for him to miss a couple of more games, I think if you're a Raider fan, you are really curious to see what Marcus Mariota may be able to do in this offense. And if he plays anywhere near like what he has done last night, then I think maybe there's a quarterback controversy with the Raiders. Now, Dolphins are next week. Good defense for the Dolphins. Then you play against the Broncos on the road. Two pretty good tests, I would think, for Mariota and this offense to see how well he fits in. But right now, Mariota is under contract next year for $10 million. And Derek Carr is under contract for $22 million. So what do you do going forward? I think it's an interesting question. And tens of thousands of you voted after this game when I said straight up, Raider fans, Who would you rather have as your starting quarterback next year? Derek Carr for $22 million or Marcus Mariota for $10 million? And right around two-thirds of you, and it's not just Raider fans voting, obviously, but 
uh, NFL fans in general, right around two-thirds of people said they would rather have Marcus Mariota. So in the grand scheme of things there, I think one of the big challenges that's going on and one of the big decisions that will have to be made for the Raiders is what do they do at the quarterback position? And what's unfortunate for the Raiders is ultimately it hasn't really been their offense that has been the issue this year. It's been their defense. But if you could get Marcus Mariota at a more competitive price, then in theory you could add a couple of decent NFL defenders for the money that you are saving on the contract with your quarterback. Now the question would be, can Marcus Mariota stay healthy? Because when he stayed healthy, he's played pretty well. I think it's fair to say he's the best backup in the league, right? I think he's better than Taysom Hill. I think that he is better than Andy Dalton. I can't even think of anybody that would really be in the running to be a better backup right now than Marcus Mariota. And certainly, he's being paid like that. You could argue Jameis Winston. But Jameis Winston isn't technically the backup right now with the Saints, and he's certainly not being paid at a high level. I don't think you can argue that Nick Foles is a better backup right now. And so that is the big question coming out of this game for the Raiders. Now, flip side, does this help save Anthony Lynn's job if you are a Charger fan? Do you want Anthony Lynn's job to be saved if you are a Charger fan is the second part of that. And I don't know that there's an easy answer, but the Chargers didn't look great in this game, but they've been so competitive in so many of their games. They're sitting now at five and nine. They have a very winnable game against the Broncos next week. If they win that one, they get to six and nine, and then they play against the Chiefs, and it remains to be seen whether that final game of the season will matter between the Chargers and the Chiefs. But the expectation has been that Anthony Lynn is not going to survive uh, going forward. But I'm not sure if that's true. If they didn't fire him coming out of the 45 to nothing loss against the Patriots, well, now the Chargers have back, bounced back and won two in a row and have a good chance to win three in a row against the Broncos. What if they decide that he fits well with Justin Herbert, who is going to be the offensive rookie of the year, what if they decide that it makes sense to continue to ride with him? I think it's a really intriguing question. 